Hello, my name is Melissa Carbajal, and I am an assistant professor of pediatrics in the section of neonatology at Baylor College of Medicine and Texas Children's Hospital. A series of modules in this program will provide an overview of compliance and elastins. The modules will include, one, the clinical definition and application of compliance and elastins, two, the mathematical application of compliance and elastins, three, resistance and time constants. Module 1 will focus on the clinical definition and application of compliance and elastins. By the end of this module, the learner will be able to apply Boyle's Law to respiratory physiology, identify the role of compliance and elastins, and the mechanics of breathing. Boyle's Law says that the pressure and the volume of a gas have an inverse relationship. Consider these two containers. In container A, when the plunger is pulled up, the volume increases and the pressure decreases. Conversely, when the plunger is pushed down, as in container B, the volume is decreased and the pressure is increased. This exhibits Boyle's Law, which states that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. This concept will help us understand the respiratory cycle. At rest, the diaphragm is dome-shaped and intercostal muscles are relaxed. The respiratory system, which includes the lungs and the chest wall, is in a steady state and there is no air movement or significant pressure differential between intrapleural and atmospheric pressure. Focus now on the left-sided figure. Upon inspiration, the diaphragm contracts, becoming flattened and the respiratory muscles attempt to expand the chest wall. This correlates to container A in the Boyle's Law example. As the volume of the pleural space increases, the pressure in the thoracic cavity decreases, creating a negative pressure differential. As a result, air is drawn into the lungs from the atmosphere. This is the active phase of the respiratory cycle. Muscle contractions cause the increased volume that leads to a negative pressure. Now compare what happens in inspiration to what happens during exhalation as shown in the figure to the right. When muscles relax during expiration, the passive phase, the diaphragm returns to its resting dome shape and the chest wall returns to its usual size. This causes a decrease in the volume and subsequent increase in the intrapleural pressure, as in container B in the Boyle's Law comparison. The increased intrathoracic pressure causes intrapleural air to be at a higher pressure than atmospheric air, so it is forced out of the lungs, resulting in passive expiration. Let us now look at the forces involved in the inspiratory and expiratory phases. Compliance is the measure of a tissue's ability to stretch and expand, while elastins is the tendency for a tissue to return to its original shape or volume. As discussed in the surfactant modules, Preterm lungs have an increased alveolar surface tension secondary to a lack of surfactant. Once surfactant is administered, surface tension decreases and lung compliance improves. Surfactant administration is the most important way to improve compliance in preterm infants. Unfortunately for the preterm infant, the underdeveloped chest wall is more compliant than the adult chest wall secondary to poorly mineralized ribs and decreased muscle mass of the diaphragm and intercostal muscles. In spite of this Suboptimal circumstance, the rib cage still provides some rigidity to prevent total lung collapse and therefore stabilizes functional residual capacity, FRC. While the inspiratory phase is active, requiring muscle contraction and compliance to generate a tidal volume, we will now look at the force that makes expiration a passive phase. Elastance or elastic recoil is the tendency for a tissue to return to its original size or shape. This idea is most often described using an inflated balloon. When the balloon is inflated, elastic recoil causes the balloon to return to its original deflated state. Once the air has an outlet, the walls of the balloon exert pressure on the air, forcing it out, allowing the balloon to passively deflate without any extra energy being introduced into the system. This is similar to breathing. When the diaphragm and intercostal muscles relax, they also exhibit elastic recoil and return to their original size and shape. Lungs demonstrate recoil as well. This is secondary to both surface tension of the alveoli and the interstitial tissue properties. Elastic recoil can be impeded by increased airway resistance, loss of elastin seen in lung fibrosis, and by anomalies of the chest wall. The point at which the collapsing tendency of the lung is counterbalanced by the chest wall resisting further collapse is called the functional residual capacity, or the FRC. The FRC is the point at which these opposing forces balance. Starting a respiratory cycle from this point provides the greatest compliance. Operating on the vertical part of the curve results in minimal work for spontaneous breathing or minimal positive pressure in the case of mechanical ventilation. 
When the lung is poorly recruited, as in atelectasis with low lung volumes, or when the lung is overexpanded, as in air trapping or meconium aspiration syndrome, suboptimal compliance results as represented by the horizontal portion of the compliance curve. We will discuss the mathematical application of compliance in elastance using formulas and pressure and flow volume curves in the next module. This concludes Module 1 in the Compliance and Elastance program. Thank you for your attention. We would like to acknowledge the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Organization of Neonatology Training Program Directors, Neo Reviews, and Abbott Nutrition for their support of this educational program. This concludes this module.